Oh, maybe my participant list is not complete. Oh, there he is. Okay, and Michael cannot do tone phone calls, he says. Um, so sorry, I was also on the internet loss, so maybe I'm not the best host. Um, is anyone able to share the WebEx uh, GitHub architecture site for us? Um, I might be able to. Yeah, because I'm using the stupid tablet uh, due to policy reasons, and uh, uh, it inhibits me from sharing lately. See. Um, I'm trying. Okay, that looks good to me. So I don't know uh, what typical order we do here. So I we are Michael for the time being. Um, do we want to start. Mike, with... Hank, is Michael able to hear us yet, or nothing yet? No, there is a bi-directional error. He does not hear us, and he, we don't hear him. And and he can't he use has, phone uh, either. <laughs> and he can't phone in either. That's just a uh, that's a new one. So uh, typically, it's a Lost on all fronts. Um, so my question would be, where do we want to start? Um, there was a, I think a topic we deferred for quite a lot of time since today, and it was Giri's. And if I'm not mistaken, he is on the call. Hi, Giri. So uh, yeah, hey. maybe we we would take that one on because we I don't know we were deferring it for like five the, minutes or something. The, the, the question is whether the previous comments have been addressed yet, because I think when we asked last time, Gary hadn't had a chance to go uh, make the updates yet, and so we deferred it because of that. And so is it ready, or do you want us to defer it again? Well, the last comment actually got me, got, got me, uh, kind of threw me for a loop, but I think it's okay. Can you open it up, uh, Hank, if you're sharing Input to Trust? This is Dave, I'm sharing. Okay, Dave, yeah, go ahead, go, go all the way down. Uh, we, we've been kind of fighting over wording, and I think uh, uh, if we go up just a little bit, I believe Ned made his suggestion. It might be at the bottom there. Keep going down. Well, Ned one made one a suggestion. Where he, Is it this one? Uh, uh, no. Uh, no, he actually, it's a bulleted item. Here we go down. Um, oh, you're on the wrong, uh, P, you're on the, you, you, I'm on the wrong one. Ah, okay. Yeah, that one's probably good. Okay, which one should I be looking at? Implicit trust? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. All right, that makes more sense. Okay. Go all, all the way right. down. Yeah, I'm going down to. Yeah, there. go up just. Yeah, yeah, there it is. There. Yeah. So this was rather elegant. And, the, you know, and if we go with this. Uh, you know, then we can, then maybe we can get over all these, you know, tripping on all these things about like, what, what is the root of trust? How do you tie it to, you know, what is it, what, you know, does it really, you know, how do you tie it to the communication channel? What is the verifier, how does the verifier know about this? So I think, um, if we're happy with this, we can find a way, you know, we can find a way to actually put this into a, a, a you know, replace the entire PR. And put it in, in just like this. So, what I didn't know, Dave, because you've had the most thoughts on this, is are you happy with this wording as it stands? Then I think we're I think we're kind of done. Then we just need to put this. Um, it, yeah, I mentioned my comment that uh, I think Ned's uh, text here is great, and so I would be happy with that. All right. Okay. Hey, Ned, you're on the call. Ned's on the call. Can you hear me? It is on the call. Ned, do you have audio? I don't know if he's connected and not listening or if he can't hear us or if he just can't talk. Um, so uh, I am I'm sorry, uh, I was addressed something to me. My internet connection is also not the best today. Oh, no. We can't hear from Ned. We can't hear from Michael. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Microphone was down. Uh, yeah. So if those words are saying what we and people are intending, then uh, yeah, let's do that. So do you want to take the lead yeah. on the PR? Is the question? Uh, yeah, I can do that. 
Okay. You, just, you can take your text right here and, uh, uh, I don't know, Gary, if you want to, uh, do you want Ned to create a different PR or do you want him to modify this one? Seems like, um, I think what you were just saying a second ago, I thought you said uh, maybe you want to create a brand new PR and abandon this one, or what are you thinking? It's either way, whatever's easiest. I think we can do it either way. Okay. We can, right. we can close this out and create a new one. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to work on it if you want. Okay, thanks, Ned. Okay. All right, thanks, so, thanks Ned. Appreciate it. Uh, let's leave this one open until we get the other one, just so it makes it easy to find the text and stuff for people to look back at here. Uh, and if you create a new PR, then it sounds like we can uh, close this one uh, without committing it once the other one exists. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. 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 Okay. What, um, what branch is this? this is implicit trust. I could just use that one. Uh, you're welcome to use that one or to create another one, whatever's easier. Okay, I'm just making sure it's off the master. Yeah, it's off the master. So if you want to create another one, implicit trust two or something, feel free. If you'd like to work in this branch and just replace the stuff, that's okay too. Whatever is easier for you. Okay. Okay. Great, great progress on that one. Thank you, Ed. And uh, I can also report that there is, um, so we, uh, this is like a, like a related topic. And for sake of Lawrence and Giri, I would like to give a micro update on this. So we were uh, talking about the UCCS stuff with um, Jeremy and John from Global Platform More. And uh, yes, uh, we uh, totally agree that there should be some uh, implicit trust uh, section about this in the architecture. So this is full support from. Uh, the GP guys that are also on the, um, for, amongst others, the eat draft, for example. And I think that's very, very, very useful. Mm -hmm. um, good. Having said that, uh, uh, the net uh, created a new pull request uh, based on uh, my old pull request that uh, they found nits in. And I think there is something uh, he uh, derived from that. I don't I didn't read that in, in entirely because it uh, was just posted in the night when I was sleeping. And I, I was just going through that one like 15 minutes before the call. And so I was trying to do a quick pass and there's a bunch of grammar and editorial things that I called out in there. Although the main paragraph changes I thought were a good improvement, but I still found lots of um, uh, things to comment on. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so uh, Ned, could you give us a small uh, overview of your uh, initiative into Kia? And uh, what what was the gist you you take took from my um, from my PR and incorporated in this one here, please? Well, uh, eighty six. Yeah. Uh, that is 86, issue yes. fifty five. No, it was issue eighty six. I was uh, first of all I'm talking about eighty six. Eighty six. It's your PR from about uh, 15, fourteen hours ago. Uh, trying to yeah, I thought I was <clears throat> thought you were. You're talking about 55, so I have to remember what I did. It's basically uh, the role composition stuff that was awful that I took a swing at, and uh, then Dave was uh, we were we were like discussing this on a on a on a detailed layer, and then you were created a something was calling I think a revised mm. swing at this based on my stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, was, that was 55, but maybe I'm messing it up, but. This is the main thing, yeah, right? Is to replace that paragraph, so that paragraph with uh, these paragraphs, right? And so I thought the paragraph changes were quite good. I had some nits in the paragraphs, uh, but I don't know if you want to walk us through this part here. So this is based on the, the new master. Text. Assume this is based on current master, so it's a yeah. it's a parallel thing, yes. So this is the, this is <clears throat> this is out of the uh, the role composition master or our role composition is the base. Which branch is this? Okay, so this is the issue fifty five is the right branch. 
Yeah, and role composition. Right, this yeah. is not committing it into master. This is committing it into role composition. You're right. So it's not even right. up on master. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, right. So, <clears throat> basically, the changes were so. So what I did was to, starting with Hank's uh, paragraph, new paragraph, uh, sort of new new uh, section six before the uh, previous section six <clears throat> essentially was to was to create the uh, uh, context around uh, role role hosting roles and role uh, and composing roles. So I uh, did that. <clears throat> what I found was <clears throat> we didn't really have a we didn't have the right uh, term. We, we don't we we didn't have the notion of of roles as being identified early on as a thing in the architecture. So going back through it, it's like there's a little bit of reference to roles in the introduction, uh, but it it doesn't it didn't really sort of capture this idea that it's a that it's an architectural thing at least i didn't think so so i kind of cleaned that up a little bit and then the terminology well i was a little confused in the terminology because it starts out everything starts out with a, um you know an attester is an entity which i don't think of it as an entity i think it's as a role a role as being uh, something that's separable from an entity and i know we've sort of had this conversation a little bit so I kept the the entity wording, but tried to make it more um, uh, more evident that that you know, we're talking about roles here, in, in when we talk about an attester and a verifier and a relying party. <clears throat> but uh, wasn't sure people were going to have issues with that. But <clears throat> try, trying to uh, to describe it in such a way that it shows the relationships between the the other roles and the messages um, more, you know, more, more, um, you know, consistently. And then, after, so, so then uh, in the context of the paragraph, I tried to use Hank's ideas. Uh, it seemed like that there were, there were uh, a couple of, a couple of exa examples that were being described um, so I, I tried to capture those examples in a, in a few words concisely. Uh, I also took the example that was in the section uh, describing composite device and moved it down there and 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 continued it as a composite device example. So there's there are two examples now: a composite device example of mixing roles, but uh, but that also includes the addition of a verifier. And then the other example seemed to be one of of multiple networks, like a, a a node that is in the confluence of multiple networks. So I uh, kind of rewrote that uh, uh, more concisely to try to illustrate the notion of multiple roles. So <clears throat> hopefully it's understandable. And in the line with what people were thinking. So this is Hank. Uh, yeah, we danced around uh, uh, using the term "role" as a tangible term. Uh, what we agreed about preliminarily was to uh, talk about a tester and define these a tester and also and such, and um, and then just use these terms and not explicitly highlighting them as roles. Which I thought was complicated because at some point we would try to aggregate them and then we are talking about ephemeral thing. I think this is what we are countering here right now. Um, because uh, now we have to uh, uh, categorize these terms into something effectively roles again. And then that you are basically able to collapse them in a thing, probably an entity. And yes, I, I understand why you don't want to be specific about this. I see, I saw. Um, Dave's, especially Dave's uh, comments about this is probably not a device, hopefully not, don't, don't try to be specific about this, remove the typically and such. And I, I, I only said device due to the uh, eat focus and, and also um, um, uh, um, entity is the thing we can all agree or kind of all agreed upon, but still it's, it's like weird, like, like having a car uh, architecture 
without the architectural component components being named is like very very hard so so now we are back at that point again so we have from my point of view we have roles and entities we combine roles of entities the end but uh, i think there's still some pushback on using these categories i think very explicitly to say these are the roles and these are the entities you use and now you build your stuff with that so um my question on uh, inside this this monologue is um are we still at that point are we still avoiding the terms roles and entities or are we or do we think now that it might be necessary to 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 pull them in a uh, couple of points um i have no problem with if you're trying to make things be more concrete mentioning a device i think my comment has the word typically if you said an entity for example a device or application or something like that if you're trying to tie it to be real i'm perfectly fine with that my comment is on the word typically okay. um ah, okay um because in uh teep and sgx enclaves and things it's not a device it's an app or an enclave or a trusted app or something but it's not a device yes. right and so there's multiple yes, examples so. that may all be typical in different scenarios i mean in the different use cases um in one use case a device is typical in a different use case an enclave is typical in a different use case an app is typical and so on and so we could mention multiple you know for example a device or application or enclave yeah. or teep, whatever <laughs> if we want to have one or more examples that's fine um, let's see um, on your other questions i'll repeat my opinions my opinion is that the word entity is perfectly fine when needed in english text such as in a definition of another term like here uh you're just trying to use a, you know something whose uh, evidence and rather than using something you know an entity just in normal english text i think is fine um i'm against trying to define new terms in here like i would not want to say entity colon and try to come up with a definition of it i think it's used to, okay in passing when you don't have a, a a term like you know something or a thing or whatever an entity is fine there um i think on uh roles it's perfectly fine to use that term i think that was another one of your questions um and then you asked a, another one which i didn't like and I forget what the other term was that you used. Oh, um, no, I've commented on entity role. You said it's something else, I forgot. No, I forgot yeah, what. I said the, 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 the catch-all term, these are all architectural components, um, which we don't have to define as a term. Yeah. But, so, but I think we need, need this bucket term. If we're always circling back to this. We, uh, we had actors once. Uh, I, I don't really dislike actors. So the SGX is an actor in a testing I, environment. I think actor, role, is actor. I think roles is a fine term to use. Like up uh, here, you know, I saw uh, uh, like Ned's uh, title here. I think is fine. Um, I got, here he capitalized roles. I think uh, my preference would be for lowercase roles there, so that you don't have to define a term in here. Meaning, I think um, if it's used in passing a couple times, I don't think it has to be formal. But I, yeah, I. I think your point is, can we call in a tester, a verifier, endorser? Can we call those roles? And I'm fine with that. I've yeah. never had a problem with that. So. Yeah, okay. And they can say that roles are there. They are things. And we host them on, well, entities lowercase. I don't know. You host them or you compose them, I think, was Ned's other term here. Because I thought you had. I used both in the title because I wasn't sure. Yeah, I, I don't know if host is the right term. Maybe it's just, you know, composing roles or role compositions or something, because I think composition is a good word. And I thought that you used composition somewhere in your text here, Ned. Yeah. Role right composition both. I use both, both and I, actually. Yeah. Remove role composition due to the input. Co combined uh, combinations uh, is good. Yeah. Um, but I thought you used multiple of them, Ned. Yeah. Um, here you used hosted, um, but you know combined in would be in, is it perhaps it's down. I used performed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Typical yeah. re roles reside on an actor, so that is that is very common terminology. You have an actor, that's, that's the thing. The SGX, the attestation, but we removed actor because uh, again, Dave, as you just uh, duly highlighted. Uh, we don't really want to include, uh, introduce new terms. But, uh, we can use them in passing, and then we use uh, established terms. But it, see, um, it seems like Dave's use of entity includes things like um, 
you know, in an ontology, a role is a thing, right? Everything's a thing in an ontology. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> By definition, everything is a thing. <laughs> so everything is I almost a think it almost seems like it's the entity is the equivalent of thing. And I mean, right now, I really like, I mean, the text that you have here, Ned, you can see, uh, unusually, I have zero comments on it, which means I really like it. Um, that, you, that should be applied. If I got to the end and I added comments after that and I skipped a large section of new text, that means this is good text. So good job. Okay. Okay. That's the question of do we do we what's our position on uppercase role? Um, we use uppercase for things that appear in the terminology section. So my uh, take at this was uppercase role is not not uh, a bad thing to Dave. So we could introduce a small sentence that says uh, there are reds roles or there are roles here. Uh, we don't have to call the reds roles because I think this will get some. I called, called it attestation you, roles. You could, but I don't think it's necessary. I think lowercase roles is perfectly readable to the normal reader without definition. In, in all the contexts that I looked at, I think it's unambiguous and perfectly understandable. Okay. Yeah. I, I, because I gave right up on here, this. it's because right here you define it in context, right? Sorry, right. Yeah. Here. Yeah. And role. You're defining it in context, and so you don't need it to be capitalized. Okay. It's already here because with role different. messages, uppercase role messages. I hate that. Okay. Conceptual okay. Mech messages. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was in a master. In master, we already have uh, conceptual messages as the section heading, and so that's why I said uh, change this back to match what's in master right now because this PR. I don't know if the I hadn't noticed when I made these comments that this is off of issue fifty five and not off of master, and so I was comparing it to master, and in master, it's always called conceptual messages. Yeah, is that concrete enough? My opinion is it's more readable, but that's me. In a section that is called conceptual messages, we, we literally uh, uh, have a section about this, so I think it's fine to use conceptual messages. It's not it, it's not rolling off the tongue, but neither does roll messages. So uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that too. Okay, so uh, roles are more prominent, but still lowercase entities are still used. Examples should not be typical. Yeah, so you can see here in, uh, I guess, issue 55, that's your branch, right? Right, Hank? Uh, that's my branch. Oh, your branch. Okay, yeah. So you can see here, roles used to be lowercase, and I like it lowercase. Your wording change is fine, but I would keep it lowercase. Okay. And... The, red, the red one is from mine. The green one is from... Uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's on mine. Oh, yeah, sorry, role composition that had uh, roles as lowercase here. And so I'm just arguing keep the lowercase as it was in role composition, keep conceptual messages, uh, but otherwise the wording changes are good. That's my opinion. And then the, the, the only typically that you want to change is the one related to the tester. Yeah, there's uh, some yeah, other, other typically, it's like I, I didn't come in. I think that's fine. I think, you know, the, here's a typically, that one's good. Um, there's another typically, I think that's good. I mean, because uh, these typically are all about uh, the endorser role, right? Saying an endorser is typically a manufacturer. I think that's fine as well. Um, and a relying party, you said, is typically an application. Um, unless somebody else speaks up, I think that's true in uh, the various use cases that uh, we have in the use cases list. Um, this one I had more of a problem with, though. Introducing a term service provider, which means different things to different people. And I would prefer to avoid that. Any suggestions? Trying to be consistent uh, the, in the, providing. Uh, the original yeah. text was, the original text was uh, more ambiguous and better. Because in, uh, in, to some people, the service provider is an ISP. To some people, it's a uh, subscription service you subscribe to that's completely separate from your network service. Um, and it could be various other things in other contexts. So, right. So I was trying to find, I was trying to be consistent in providing intuition and uh, agree that I couldn't find anything better than service provider. Like, uh, like yeah. I know uh, Intel, ARM, and Microsoft are all uh, things that have uh, verifiers today. And I'm sure there's a much longer list as we look across the other use cases. So, uh, so uh, just <clears throat> so so is there a consensus to just not have a uh, intu intuition? How about just, just 
Just service. Oh, you mean software it. provider? Typically a service? Yeah, typically a service, yeah. Huh. I could live with that. That's not, yeah, okay. But entity, yeah, uh, okay, but the service is fine. I think entity is such a soft term that you can, uh, you can say this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good suggestion. There's another typically, and that already had a such as. So you say you upgrade it from an example to a typical. I'm fine with that. And I think that's all the typically's in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to highlight or you want us to talk about? Because I think we've now I think we've covered, I uh, covered uh, pretty much all of my sentences that aren't simple editorial ones that we probably don't have to discuss. Question is, I don't see anything else that is picked uh, uh, out. Um, so my next question is, uh, how do we deal with this? We merge this um, PR. I have a, I have a bunch of comments. I'm, I, I'm making. Okay, great. Good. Then we will go with you, Lawrence. Well, i I was just gonna. I was just writing them here, but um, one of them is to avoid the term trustworthy. Because I don't just think that's uh, that's just fraught, uh, fraught with trouble. Yeah, it's, uh, it's defined by the uh, by the um, oh, dang it, by the charter. So the charter uses the word trustworthy, I think, twelve times or something. It's literally the core of the work. <laughs> Doesn't mean we have to use. It. What's the problem with the word trustworthy? Well, this is trustworthy with respect to a particular point of view, which is. Uh, in this case, it would be the, the verifier's point of view. But what's the problem with the term? Um, to, to me, the relying party is going to make a decision to provide service or not provide service or provide some level of service or not provide some level of service. So uh, I would always just put it in those terms. Uh, the relying party decides whether it's going to provide the service or not. Um, Based on the the uh, attestation result, the so content. No here, one is not about the relying party. It's about the verifier. The verifier does something. Can you use trustworthy to refer to something that the verifier does, or what's the problem with it in the verifier context? Uh, let's see. I get your point about the relying party. Not disagreeing with that, but just the context here is in the context of the verifier. Meaning the, the, the verifier uses uh, evidence and um, endorsements to produce the attestation result. It doesn't make any decision about whether it's trustworthy or not. It just produces the attestation result. Uh, I don't think that's true for verifiers, at least for some verifiers. Some of them will produce a, an explicitly negative attestation result to say this thing is not uh, trustworthy because it contains the following, you know, because it contains vulnerabilities or because it's, um, as a timestamp that's too old or whatever. And so they may say, this should never be trusted as a, you know, as a signed statement from the verifier. There are verifiers that work that way. Yeah. I, I think I agree that trustworthy in this case is bad, right? Because it, it, it really isn't about trust. It's about whether or not the claims the evidence support are sufficiently substantiated for the use. Um, trust and trust decision. This is a approval effect by this what you just said. So trustworthiness is not trust. It's different things. And, and if we're we saying that the, the, cl the claims are intended to be claims about trustworthiness, and therefore, I don't think so. About... No, I don't think so. The claims are not about trustworthiness. The GPS coordinate is is not about trustworthiness. It's a it's a GPS coordinate. Some would argue that that's not a, a great example. Yeah, it is actually uh, correct. It, Both are it, evidence. That is true. And there are cases where GPS is used for trustworthiness. For example, if the GPS says that that machine is no longer in my data center, I don't consider it trustworthy because it's been stolen or is no longer in a secure location. A GPS can absolutely be about trustworthiness. It can be used in trustworthiness decisions, right? A secure location versus not in the secure location anymore. 
just let's see. I don't think that we're trying to de de design a telemetry system is the thing, right? Uh, I mean, I, I personally do not have any problem with using the word trustworthy in the verifier context. I agree that it's not appropriate, that it's, it's, it's better ways to phrase stuff in a relying party context, but in a verifier context, I think it's fine. That's why I'm trying to figure out if somebody can convince me why it's bad there, because I'm open to that. So hopefully I have a better suggestion, but um, it doesn't seem bad to me. As long as it's not just trustworthy. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Elaborate. So, uh, if you say if it, if it is trustworthy, it's a binary decision. Verifier doesn't produce a binary result. A verifier produces a, a complicated attestation result that needs further evaluation by the relying party. True. In general, that's true. Yeah, I agree. You, you gotta. I mean, to me, this whole thing—the only—the only person that, the only thing that actually gets to make any kind of a binary decision, a yes or no, in this the whole architecture is the relying party. And even there, it's not a binary decision. Often it'll be like, okay, I, yeah, you can have act, you can have this amount of uh, this size transaction or that size transaction or something. We do we define trustworthy to be binary? I don't think we do. I think the, the we don't. We say it's like a spectrum. But I, I am noticing. I think I'm getting somebody else's point now. The phrase that I have highlighted right now. Let me move it up a little bit here. The phrase that I have highlighted right now. Um, I do realize is problematic in one sense, and maybe if we fix that sense, it'll fix people's problems with trustworthy here that it's not mine. So this is talking about the evidence has to be appraised, such as when deciding whether uh, the attester is authorized to perform some operation. Right? This decision here is done by a relying party. Yeah. The determining whether the evidence is considered trustworthy is something that's done by a verifier. Okay. Now, of course, this is just a such as such as when the verif when a relying party needs to decide stuff. Uh, this phrase is perhaps problematic in terms of a, an attester as phrased, um, and I don't know what a better way to fix it is. It's not completely broken in my view, but it's probably. Uh, Maybe there's a better suggestion as to how to word this, and maybe that their suggestion would just happen to avoid this issue. I don't know. So I'll have to think about that. What I think she should do is just the verifier produces uh, the attester the result. This is describing the attester. Yeah. Okay. I realize I think I'm, I was misreading that sentence. So, Dave, the way you just described it, you said that you know it is considered trustworthy. You used it referring to the evidence. I was originally reading it as it referring to the attester. Correct. The, you look at the red, whether the entity is considered trustworthy. So this is about whether the attester is considered trustworthy and whether the attester is authorized to perform some operation. So that's why when I said this it right here, I expanded it to match what the original text meant. You can see that was my point down here. But, but the relying party may vary its transaction size based on some characteristic of the Attester. The attester, yeah. maybe it's certified at a certain level and it right. gives us this, so it's not a binary decision about the attester either. You're right. Right. Again, again, sorry, sorry, sorry. I actually have to highlight here that the, that the, you all trust the roles. The uh, attester trusts the verifier to be consumer of its evidence. The relying party trusts the verifier to be a, uh, a producer of the attestation result. You have endorsements here. You you trust signatures. That's all trust. No, oh, God, no. no, signatures are not about trust. Are you are you are you literally trying to tell me that signatures are not a trust relationship? Signatures because tell you that the thing you know has integrity to the to some to some degree based on what you know about it. No, it doesn't the term but the problem with the term trust is that and trust and trustworthy is it's always just by the, the nature of English language, a binary thing. That is not our intent here. I, I don't think that's true. Again. This is a phrase that I thought appeared to... somewhere else. Um, I, I could be misremembering, but I thought it was in at least one pull request. I don't know if it's a mess or not. The extent to which it's trustworthy, right? It, which is the phrase that says it's a spectrum, it's not binary. Again, I was only talking about trust. Trustworthiness. So you decide you want to believe things that are signed by the signer. By the signer, then you put trust into the signer and trust into the signature. That's a decision. Then you have content of the thing that is signed. 
that is not binary, most certainly. And then the content of the thing is assigned is about trustworthiness. And then the verifier most certainly makes an assessment of the trustworthiness and the relaying party still cannot <clears throat> take that into account or can take that into account. Even if it trusts the verifier, it can still make its own decision about how to processing these attestation results. But I agree that the result the result of, of a signature verification operation is a, is a binary is binary. There's no degree in that. Thank so, you. But, Thank you. but so the, I, I think the uh, so I don't so so I generally dislike this definition of a tester because it's trying to define a tester from the perspective of both the verifier and the relying party, and it ought to describe the a tester from the perspective of the attester. Yes. Uh, and. I, I think it's orthogonal to this uh, pull re request. What what are what the definition of you know the wording of the definition of role? So maybe we can maybe we can open a separate issue that to revisit our definition of of tester. Maybe the other roles. <clears throat> sure. I think it would help to uh, uh, exchange the its in this uh, line two uh, one two six here. Yeah. With the tester, then we know the scope that, better. First of all, yeah, that's what I said. My comment down here is the the green is not <laughs> quite correct because green changed it to refer to evidence, right? Being the the, the last uh, noun before the uh, the the reference, and reverting to it, it would go back to the entity or the attester to be even more clear. Yeah, but that that's what I commented down here. So. Right. So I, I would I would advocate for that, but. So just revisiting the definition to, to try and not to do in a different uh, for we're one. defining we're trying to define both the verifier and their lying party in the context of defining the, the tester, which yeah. maybe, maybe there's no other way to do it. I don't know, but it seems odd to me. So, so one, one other comment here is that the, the word determine is too definitive here for trustworthy. It, it, it's it's really the evidence is only supporting a determination of it, right? You can't ever determine trustworthiness. All you do is push trust around. Right? That's why we use appraise and appraisal policy. <clears throat> I don't know why we don't use the, that wording here as well. Um, because this is trying to say that there's a process here without saying how it's done. I think appraisal policy is in a different later definition, meaning further down the page. I know, but at some point, the all the definitions become intertwined. Uh, but if you choose different words, then people have issues with the other words. So if we found words that we agree on, we should use those words and not use other words. I think it's quite fine for the definitions to refer to each other. I mean, they really do have deep relationships. So I agree. Right now, my preference for this PR, as opposed to a future one that uh, Ned was suggesting, is that uh, the red text other than uh, fixing this, in other words, the, the whether trustworthy sounds binary and to determine the extent to which it's trustworthy, I would go ahead and make that change here because I think that is an improvement to say it's not binary um, or it is in general not binary. But other than that, I can live with the rest of the red text until the other PR comes. Um, the determination, yeah, there was this comment about to determine and to, uh, um, to switch it to um, um, determination. I think it's subtle. But it would address also another concern, so maybe we can also do that here. Would that be okay? I'm not sure whether I understood. Uh, there was a previous comment on determine, to determine. If that yeah. comment could be repeated, uh, then maybe we can incorporate that here. I thought it was a valid one. Uh, that was my comment. I was saying that determine was too definitive. That you're, the whole purpose of the attestation is to support a determination. Determination, your use of the of the word determine or determination is in the context of the relying party making the determination. Um, this line is trying to apply the determined in the context of the verifier. Yep. And we said we would use appraise evidence, right? So, uh, yeah, at some point, part, it's of, like, part of the you know, confusion that comes from the idea of what is evidence. Is evidence a, a single claim or is it a, a body of no. claims? It's each a body of claims. It's a body of claims, yeah. Right. So, if, if, you, if it is a body of claims, 
then yep. your that determination is uh, inference based on what those claims are. Yeah. And so what is inferable will depend on the set of claims that are there. Is that a better word to infer whether the entity is considered trustworthy or? How, how, how do you like the green text on the screen right now? I, I like that better. That's fine. Right. Um, uh, if everybody likes this, I'm going to go ahead and commit this into uh, Ned's branch, uh, just so we can make some progress here. And then uh, Ned can go through the other uh, uh, minor editorial stuff. Uh, then we would mer I'm going to go ahead and commit this right now. Um, so I have a set of uh, review comments I'm submitting. Uh, I'd like it. You know, pull requests need like a few days at least before you merge them, yeah. so if we can actually process them. Well, well, keep in mind that this right now is not a merge into master. This is a merge into role composition. So we still we still have role composition that you can comment on before it goes into the master. But it's Lawrence, still, you know, I'm trying to be productive with comments here. Like to, is there a place that you'd like us to look at right now that you submit your comments? Uh, I'm trying to do a review here, but everything's moving so fast. I'm, I mean, okay. I, I can't really. I'd right. like to, well, you know, I kind of did this on the fly, so I have I've had like an hour since I woke up to look at it. So, you, yeah, I, I mean, you, uh, you do a pull request. It's you typically, I mean, my pull requests sit out there for months with people, a lot of people looking at them. So, uh, I'm, I'm really on top of the ball here. Can we go to a different? This is a, uh, this is a, a um, addition to uh, my pull request, and I do not mind. This being pulled into my pull request, this single sentence, just to highlight that. Okay. okay so we have about nine minutes left. Um, my question is to Lawrence, would you prefer us to discuss any of your comments, Lawrence, or would you prefer us to go into a different issue and come back to this next week? Um, I'm happy. Let me see if I got a uh, let's check here, see if I got. Uh... What, what was the resolution around line 624 about role? Let's, let's leave for it for next week. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to uh, try to answer. This. What was it? 624 was a question? 24. Yeah, there. What was uh, the conclusion? Stick with conceptual right. messages. You're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go with your suggestion to conceptual messages. Because that's what's already in master, right? Role messages was some uh, thing that was only in role composition. It's not in master. And uh, people were agreeing to that conceptual messages was at least as good. I thought there was a consensus on that. So we're here on the call. Probably when, when Michael, you didn't have um, any um, ability to hear us during that gap. I had, yeah, I, yeah, I wound up with audio, but not, not, not screen for a while. So yeah, I'm, I'm also fine with rolling back uh, role messages to conceptual messages as they are in uh, role composition PR. Michael, do you have screen now? Michael, can you yeah, see? Yeah, I, I, I do. Okay. Okay. I, I, I okay. yeah. Anyway, I had open another another tab. So I think that you had a bunch of editorials which I put into the batch, which we should commit, and that that. Uh, For which one? For the 86. For 86. Okay. Yeah. 86. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to let uh, Ned uh, do that because I didn't touch every line. Um, so, for example, the role messages and conceptual messages are in there a bunch of times in that per request, and it should need to be a bolt search and replace. So, and so I wasn't going to merge it right now. I was going to let Ned merge it into, into the role composition uh, uh, branch. Is that okay with people? Okay. Fine with that. Okay, so uh, uh, just being explicit, um, Ned, in the issue 55 branch, there's a bunch of uses of uh, role messages. I only commented on the first line, and it appears like six times or something like that. And so just do a global search and replace, and then go ahead and uh, merge once you've addressed the other editor. Make sense? Meaning merge into role compositions, which is still in a master, right? We'll re-review it on the quote role compositions uh, branch into master. Uh, uh, per request, uh, so we can review that part next week. Does that sound okay? And we 
Well, issue 55 merged into role compositions, and then next week we can uh, review the diffs between role compositions to master. Yeah. Sound good? Just a, so we're we're doing a lot of work on defining terms here in this uh, pull request. So which is not really role role composition, or, or I guess it is. Oh, never mind. Okay, yeah. Um, we uh, have six minutes left. Um, what do we want to do in the last six minutes? I would love to get people's opinion on the term, the straw man term that I threw into eighty five which we haven't had discussion about yet, I would love to take five minutes to just get people's opinions on there to see if they like it or they hate it, or if they have a bit of another suggestion. Anybody have a, a different suggestion? Because that, that would be my own preference. But. Could you open it up so that we can have at least a... Uh, All right. So the, I'm going to go to the files change. You can see, Hank, we are looking for a better term than UFI BIOS firmware. So there's a bunch of places that said UFI BIOS firmware. And so... The very first a testing environment has to ensure the integrity of the UFI BIOS firmware or whatever that initially boots up a composite device. Okay. And so I tried to come up with a term for that first thing that's above the hardware. Okay. I uh, mean, like you have ROM or, or okay. And so I tried, I, my suggestion was the first mutable environment. Example BIOS or firmware. It's perfect. Okay. And uh, so it's very, very better. Way better than everything yeah, before. Yeah. Here's another example. Yeah, uh, it talks about the target. Uh, yeah, this is Gary. This is Gary. Yeah. Hey, this is Gary here really quick. Sorry, I, I'm going to have to break you now. I did look through that. I like the text. I know what you have, uh, what you have intended. Um, we just, you know, in the IoT space, though, the, you know, with heavily runnable code, we, uh, the, the root of trust may only be attesting something that's essentially um, what we would consider hard, a hardware function. So, like for instance, the uh, you know, if there's one-time programmable, if there's one-time programmable memory, it may just be reporting on that. So it wouldn't be mutable from that perspective. That, that a uh, programmable part of the you know, a programmable uh, part of the uh, environment, the target environment would be. So, if you want to cover that, fine. If you don't, if you think it's just going to complicate things, we can leave that off. But uh, I'm just saying that that isn't the universal question for you, Gary. This is in the section about layered attestation. Is the case that you're talking about a case that uses layered attestation, or is it only a one attesting, one target environment case? Um, it can be layered depending on. It, it can be layered if the root of trust all all it does is it just uh, it, it just reports a, it, it just reports a hardware state, and then it just triggers. The it, it triggers a, a power on of a su, of a subsystem, you know, a target environment. But, but that target environment, you know, is basically all ROM code. It's not really it it, it, it goes ahead and if it needs if it's it, and it verifies its own patch. Therefore, it just triggered a power on of the of the target environment. The target environment itself, though, is the one that actually verifies its it verifies whatever is the mutable aspect of its code. That's running. So I can put this in a comment on there, but I mean, it's a, it, you know, it's actually what I'm describing is actually sometimes you, you see it a lot in the IoT space. You don't see it, you don't see it really in the PC space. So, so but this, somebody else this is trying section, to jump in. Go ahead. This section is in the context of providing intuition in the form of an example, and the example mm -hmm. is a PC BIOS example. Open. It That's fine. That's fine. Keep it. If if we want to say this is. Clearly, for PC BIOS, then that's fine. I just, uh, it may, it, then that explains the intent, and we can do, we can say the other the other point, the other corner cases that I'm thinking about. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe you don't need to really even uh, discuss that here. So, okay. But, but yeah, I think I agree. Gary, Gary, if Gary, if you could if you could uh, uh, highlight a prominent uh, French case for you, it's not French legal, of course. So a prominent use case for, for from your side. I think that's helpful in an issue tracker, uh, so that we do not lose this and can make a deliberate decision on. Okay, this is, we do not have to elaborate on this; it's implicit enough. Uh, I think it's very important to have this. Uh, the the okay. small things are less mutable than you think they are uh, here. Yeah. So what okay. I'm saying is that uh, Gary, you would be okay if we choose to not cover it, but I think that the case you're talking about is where the first two layers are both immutable. 
as opposed to the first layer being immutable and the second layer being mutable, right? If I understand your point, so that yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, immutable layers. Yeah. Uh, but as long as this is just an example, then it is fine because the whole point is you just describe how layered works and how it actually maps is just an example. So, so if it's an example, stick with UFI and BIOS, then you know it's really an example and you're not, you're not trying for something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah, UFI BIOS point. is probably good. Well, firmware can be muted. You can flash firmware and stuff. So it's all free. Yeah, yeah, firmware too, right. But Right. Um, so we're still going to use uh, this term as long as it's kept clear that this is just an example and that there are other types of, you could have, uh, you could have layered attestation with like five layers of all immutable stuff. I don't know why you do that, but you could, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can, so mutability the, isn't, isn't critical here. The, yeah. the, term, <clears throat> the term mutable gets us into <clears throat> kind of semantic issues because. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <clears throat> what At the end of the day, Mutability is controllable, and depending on your perspective and where you are in the supply chain, it either is or isn't mutable. Yeah. And um, it's my, my intent was that. mutable ever by anybody, right? That was the intent here. Never, but that. That's never the case. Yeah, that's almost never the case. What's never the case? So I, what I meant is, if that's anybody can mute it, the, hmm? the, the, word, the word immutable. Can, is yeah. a philosophical thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, I don't have a better suggestion. I heard several people that said that they like this. I want to go back to UFI and BIOS. I think that's better. It's, it's not the... UFI and BIOS. The term was UFI slash BIOS slash firmware. Yeah, understood. But I'm okay with firmware, right? Just as long as it's in the context of. of Remember, the... we're, we're, we're trying to get rid of this. We're trying to get rid of this to do. We're looking for a better term then. And so we're trying to get rid of this text. We're trying to delete those three lines. What do we do? To I'm, saying, I'm saying that I think that is a, the term that you're using is good because then it is an example. Don't get rid of it. You can, you can say, I, you can say things like the, you know, PC firmware, for example, UFI BIOS, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's not that hard of a problem in the context of an example of a PC. Scenario. So, who was it that spoke right before uh, Ned? Was that Lawrence? I'm not. Re yeah, not re I think um, so. so. Lawrence, can you just explain what you think the text should say in like in these two lines? Which of the you like red or green or something else? Well, I, I just I mean I haven't read the text in detail, so I'm I'm just my, I'm reacting, and I'm I think you're reacting, yeah. let, let me say first immutable environment. You're trying to go abstract your your. Then you start getting calling into question what's mutable, what's not mutable, and all kinds of. It looks like it's starting to look like a definition. Where if you say UFI slash BIOS slash firmware, it's clearly an example and just an example that's very specific and and clearly the world it doesn't all use 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 UFI BIOS and firmware. Clearly, other there are other things out there. So you're just trying to be an example. Stay as stay as an example. All right. So we're over time, but I understand you saying you like the red text better, correct? Yeah, generally yes. Okay, so I think we're out of time, but and so I just wanted to highlight this to get your first impressions. Feel free to go through and review this um, offline. I just wanted to highlight it and see whether there was general likes or general dislikes on this. And so I don't know that we came to a conclusion, and that's fine. We can come back to this next week. And so I at least wanted to introduce it and let people hear what other people were, what we're thinking. Fair enough. All right. So shall we uh, pause here and resume in a week? Sounds, sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> Other people have meetings to get off to, so let's I'm go ahead and stop sharing here. I don't own the call, but I was sharing, so okay. Okay. Bye. Talk to you next week. Thanks, Paul, for hosting. Thanks, Paul, for hosting. <laughs>